and welcome back. It is officially October. It is officially spoopy season. And I've never been one for like Halloween, like in the same way that other people are. Like I like the holiday. I think it's a good time, but I don't, I think because of just how my work life has been and everything, I've never really been able to like go hog wild on like making costumes and cosplays and stuff just for Halloween. I know that might sound weird, but it's true. But because now that I work for myself, I'm like, oh yeah, like let's let's have some fun with with Halloween. Like let's let's do cosplay. Let's have a good time. With that being said, I have a really intense make. It is Monday, September like 28th or something, whatever it is. And you guys are gonna be seeing this on Sunday, so I'm literally going to be doing this in just a few days. But I wanted to make a cosplay of one of my favorite TV characters, Nadia from What We Do in the Shadows. It's a big bloody stupid hat with a big bloody stupid curse on it. And every time you wear it, something bloody stupid terrible happens. I love Nadia's aesthetic. And I just want to kind of like play with that a little bit. And I'm gonna take some modern stuff, some historical stuff and kind of mishmash it together to turn myself into Nadia and Yay, I'm kind of really excited about it. Before we get started, let's go ahead and just kind of talk about how I'm gonna design Nadja, like some of Nadja's design aspects and highlights that we're looking for when it comes to Nadia's overall aesthetic. So the first costume we're gonna look at for Nadja is kind of her most iconic piece and is what one of the ones that is used for a lot of the costume stills and promotional stills from the first season. What we're seeing here is a serious, serious heavy influence from the 1890s. And we're seeing this not only leg of mutton sleeves, so this is gonna be 1890 probably more specifically 1893 to 1895. These are out of velvet. Also the skirt here, we can see that there's gores there and there. But the shapes that we see Nadja wear throughout both seasons, an 1890s-ish style gored skirt. Now the ways that this is kind of modernized and updated and purposefully like anachronistic, but also delightful like goth queen history bounder, let's just be honest, she is definitely her own core aesthetic. The belt, that is definitely something along the lines of what my mom would have worn in like the 80s and I'm here for it. Very modern hair with the blunt cut bangs and it's long and it's curly. And then we have this amazing like 1700s-ish Jabo, because <laughs> there's no other way to describe it. And then we have a mix of textures here as well. And I think when it comes to doing Nadja, I think textures are extremely important. So if you are looking to do a Nadja cosplay, the way the designer worked with textures is just dull. She also always has red fingernails and rings and jewelry on. So she's always rocking a lot of jewelry, but it's definitely heavily, heavily, heavily influenced from the 1890s. So if you're looking to do a Nadja cosplay, looking from like 1890 to 1895, or more specifically 1893 to 1895 is a really great starting point for historical influence. She has been a fantastic character to design. Just having a female in the house and having a little bit more freedom to be flamboyant and feminize the world of the vampire. I agree with the werewolf slut. <sighs> I love this show. Okay, anyways, but this is a really great example of Nadja's core colors. So when we're looking at Nadja, what you're gonna see first and foremost is black. That is her main palette. And then we're gonna see golds and beiges, just like we saw, and then accents and reds. And usually you will see this kind of, those three colors work together in various ways, shapes, and forms throughout the two seasons. Again, they all match because it's adorable. So we have leopard print cravat for Laszlo, the leopard print blouse for Nadja, the red belt matches the red waistcoat and then they have black skirt and black pants on. So again, perfectly matched. <laughs> I love it. So we have 1980s hair for Nadja. She's gone more into a glossy pinky lip by season two, the red belt. And then this blouse is actually super modern, but the inspiration is kind of 1830s-ish. And then the skirt is still that kind of very classic 1890s style. We don't see like trumpeted skirts. We don't see anything super fitted to Nadia. It has a lot of movement, a lot of room, but they are gored. They're not circle skirts. And her and Laszlo like to match a lot as well. What say we retire to our bedchamber and slip into some informal evening wear? So the first thing I need to do is I need to actually tape and cut out my pattern. I am using the mum pattern. So it's M-U-M. -E 
M-E. It is super cute. It has over 90 something variations you can do within this blouse, which is a little overwhelming, but very exciting. Link down in the description below. With all the different variations, I am just going full hog. We're gonna do the Victorian collar, the double ruffles, the longer sleeves. Fabric I'm gonna be using is this unknown material from my stash. It has that beautiful black and gold bronzy color. I'm gonna be using some black silk taffeta as well, especially I think for the ruffles and some like collar details. Let's go become Nadja. Of all the things that have happened, the potato famine, the time that that horse knocked you over and trampled over you. No, it didn't. Then it started making love to you? I don't consider that a curse. It's growing human hair. Alright, it is like quarter after five and I have finished cutting out all of the pattern pieces. The more I look at this fabric and the way it handles, I think this is actually real silk. But it's changeable as well so you can see like even the sides are different so hopefully... Oh dear. I think I cut out. I'm gonna cut this out wrong. Cause I didn't realize there was a wrong side and a right side. Um, until just now. Well, I guess I'll check that first. Go me. Be strong, sweet little one. the next day and I need to finish my blouse today. I got the collar finished yesterday, I got the zipper in yesterday, and I was able to put together the initial center front, center back, back of the bodice. So I got a lot of the fiddly stuff out of the way, which is really good. So that kind of helps when it comes to like pacing and exhaustion because there's nothing worse than like busting your tail, working so hard to get something done, and then like the last few steps are like the most fiddliest and frustrating. So I like getting the fiddly stuff out of the way. I'm happy about that, I'm glad that that's done. That's what it looks like right now. So we have the stand-up Victorian style collar with the ruffle. So I'm thinking once I get the ruffles on that it will look better. So I have just black ruffles, but I'm gonna cut it so that way there are actually two layers instead of just hemming it, because I was trying that yesterday and I was like, you know, I don't really wanna deal with that. And because the silk taffeta is so soft, I think having the double layer and then just maybe putting a layer of organdy on the inside to help stiffen it up so that way it's just a little bit more firm, a little bit more like pfft. I'm not making this to wear on the day to day, I'm making this to become nudge. That I think having a little bit more of a, the extreme touch there will be a nice addition. If not, <laughs> Whoa, sir! Good sir! You're being kind of rude right now. I'm talking to the everyone on the YouTube. Yeah, you lay down. You good now? Okay, good. So I think that's what I'm going to do, which means I need to cut out some more stuff, but I think in the end I'm going to be happier with it, and I think it's going to be more Nadja. Then tomorrow is uh, Nadja day. I'm very stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer a, a longer, a longer thing. But uh, so yeah, anyways, let's get to sewing and let's see how long it takes to get this done. So in the spirit of 
of trying to get this done in a hurry and being efficient, I've decided that I wanted to do some mild embroidery on the edge of the ruffles on the collar to help kind of tie everything together and help give some separation and some definition to the collar. So I just did some quick samples and I think I'm gonna end up going with the daisy chain here just because Nadja does wear a lot of like lace and ruffles and things like that. And so I think that could be a nice like tie into that aesthetic of hers. And then I laid it next to this gold and I think it actually does pretty well together. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I really hope I don't regret it, but I guess if I don't like it, I'll just cover it up with Sharpie. But you know, let's waste some time doing fiddly shit. So did you find any good virgin blood? <laughs> I cannot believe you allowed Nandor to stick it in there! Every time. Every time. So Nadja's done. And then I found a lab flow. And we decided just, you know, to take over Abby's YouTube channel. So here we are. Hello, YouTube. Bat! <laughs> I'm very happy with how this cosplay's come out. I think I look relatively convincing as Nacho. So overall, I think it's gone pretty well. The quality of my work isn't the best. Like there's definitely wrinkles and, and puckers and stuff like that. But the thing is like, it's a cosplay, so I'm not gonna be too finicky about it. I'm not gonna be wearing this out and about for like normal clothes. The color combination is not really my aesthetic, so I'm not too worried about it. But I think when it comes to fulfilling a look of Nadja, I think that this blouse by P&M Patterns is actually a pretty great option. It's definitely not a pattern for beginners. Everything went together actually pretty well. The sleeves went in just fine, which is always a big thing. When it comes to filling a pseudo 1890s-esque gothic history bounding feel, the ruffles, the Victorian collar-esque, like the cuffs, all of that, I think it really did a great job for this whole ensemble. Be cold, and if it starts to get at all warm, even just, even just a little warm, then you really, you gotta put it in the fridge. And so that's the key, is that temperature control is really, really important. And... <laughs> all right, everyone. So I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your week. I will see you all back here next week with... Hi. I hope that you all have a great rest of your week and I'll see you all back here next week. Bye! <laughs> Do that again because it's hilarious. That's gonna take the longest time. It's fine until you get to like the noises. Is the boom in the shot good? That's what I want. Just, I want the boom. Just, I want just enough just of enough. the boom. Just, just the tip. Yeah, just, just want the, the tip. Big, whoa, that's freaking huge. Lego mutton's. Where did that come from? My goodness. We used to use donkey dung for fuel. And when the donkey dung ran out, we would have to burn the donkey. So yes, I don't know what it feels like to be mocked and teased and to cry myself to sleep at night by the light of a burning donkey. <laughs> you look so bald. <laughs> he is literally going around telling everyone, nice to meet you, I am a vampire. And you know, there's only so many times you can say that he's joking, because look at his face. He's as mad as a wax banana.
Oh, that's way too close. No, closer. Oh god. Let's back that. Let's back that party train up a little bit. What? <laughs> really? Okay. I can't see shit because it is small. Yeah. And I got my glasses. Yeah. Mm. 